What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined this morning by Anthony Wittrato, here to talk Dodgers and Angels. And Anthony, before we dive into this game specifically, I have a working theory that I wanted to run by you. There's a guy on the Dodgers by the name of Shohei Otani, and I'm beginning to think that he's pretty good. Uh, Never heard of him. Facing his, he's facing his old team, the Angels, tonight. Uh, his last five games, Otani, 10 for his last 21 with four homers and three doubles. He has reached in 14 of his last 25 plate appearances and over those five games has eight runs, nine RBIs and one stolen base. Am I reacting? Am I overreacting to a small sample size here with the Sotani guy? Or do you think there's some sustainability here? Yeah, he might stick. The Dodgers might want to think about signing him long-term, um, you know, be careful of the cost, but yeah. a long-term, long-term commitments probably in the, in the works. Um, no, look, I mean, I'll be honest, I was a little concerned during the recent slump that, you know, maybe that hamstring was a little more severe than we thought. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was bothering him in ways that we hadn't heard yet and that this could sustain itself uh, in terms of in terms of sort of that valley that he was in. And it might take, you know, an IL stint, you know, a little prolonged one there to get him right and and um to see him sort of break out the way he has. And sure, it's a small, it's, it's a bit of a small sample, but for this guy, he's, you know, he's good for six or seven of these a season, these kinds yeah. of stretches. And so what this tells me more than just, it's great that he's hot is that maybe that injury thing was, was what they told us it was fairly minor and that that wasn't what was bothering him. It was just, you know, the ups and downs of a season. Yeah, I mean, looking at what he was going into prior to this, he was in like an 11 for 54 stretch over like two plus weeks prior to this five game stretch, the last game of that Royals series, and then four games in Coors Field doesn't hurt. And I mean, keep in mind, like Brenton Doyle in center field makes an incredible catch the other night. Otherwise, this would be 11 for 21 with an another double and a few more RBIs. So uh, just an, a, a crazy stretch. The, the fun storyline here as well, is that he's set to face the Angels for the first time. It's not down in Anaheim. It is in Los Angeles uh, at, at Dodger Stadium. But, like, how do you think this plays out as far as Otani versus the Angels? Do you think this is a big deal? Do you think it's not a big deal? Do you think there's going to be any sort of, like, poor reception from if Angels fans exist and make their way to Dodger Stadium? Do you think they would be cheering or booing Otani? Like, how do you see this playing out? Angel fans going to Dodger Stadium. That's fun. Um, <laughs> No, I look, I think if anything, the reception for Otani from the home fans might be louder tonight because yeah. of who they're playing against. I don't think you hear much negative reaction. I think if we were, I, I think if this game was happening in Anaheim, the reaction might be a little bit different. We might be having a bit of a different conversation. Um, I think Angels fans are fine with how this played out. With let, let me let me say this. Yeah. I think they're fine that he left. I think yeah. they understood everything that went along with it. I think most Angels fans understand that their owner is a sham. Yeah. And that for him to not even be willing to to play in the waters that it was going to take to keep maybe the greatest player of our generation in an Angels uniform. Yeah. They just sort of throw their hands and go, yeah, you know, this is the team that we've signed up to root for. Um, we understand. I'm sure they don't like that he went to the Dodgers. You know, yeah. that's probably gonna that's probably gonna wrinkle some people the wrong way. But um you know, I, I don't think there's there's like hatred there. I don't think yeah. you know he's going to go there and he's going to get just you know tremendously booed every time he steps up to the plate or something like that. I don't think there's that kind of animosity for him with that franchise with the fan base at least. Um, and so you know what to expect tonight. I think I think you know he'll get a a nice ovation from everybody the first time he comes up. I think the cameras will pan to some Angels fans, you know, you know clapping and you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I don't think there's much to it. I think that um, for him personally, there might be a little more. You know, he's going to see some of his old teammates. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that Mike Trout's not in the lineup, but uh, you know, I, I just, I just think for him, it's probably let's get this one out of the way. Probably better that it happens at home first. Um, yeah. You know, we don't want to see anything like we saw with Freddie Freeman in Atlanta. Um, yeah. 
you know, just just kind of how that went on and on. And it took Clayton Kershaw, one of the leaders of the club, has to come out and say something. You know, I don't think we're going to have that sort of situation here. So um, I think I think after that first at bat, it's going to be a normal game and a normal series for him for the most part. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I I would like to think the reasonable fans, not all fans are reasonable, obviously, but the reasonable Angel fans will be able to see that the anger should be directed towards their owner and not towards Otani. Um, it, it seemed like Otani gave them every effort to sort of compete with the Dodgers in as far as signing him. And so my hope is that they would be able to recognize it and that they would just be able to appreciate that this guy was even on their franchise for the time that he was. Yeah, um, and he won them two MVPs. That's not nothing. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, they couldn't put a team around him that can sustain success. But the fact that he became the greatest player in baseball and won two MVP awards in their uniform, that that's something, you know, that yeah. that's really cool. Like as a, as, as a baseball fan, I think that's just something that you can appreciate as an angels fan. It's something you can take pride in, even though it didn't lead to a world series or anything like that. Um, you know, so again, I, I don't think there, and it's not like he went in there and, and bound, pounded on the table and demanded a trade or something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, it well. yeah, I think he did. And um, he gave the angels the opportunity to say, look, we want you here long-term they did not do that. And so he moved on, uh, yeah. you know, and, and so that's why I think the animosity levels are going to be really low, even when he goes back to Anaheim. Um, I do think it's interesting though, that, uh, you know, I, I, I got the, uh, the mess, the PR messaging that, um, he's debuting his signature new balance line of, of, of cleats tonight against that team. You well, know, that's, that's not coincidental that that was, you know, that was a targeted date. Um, so good for him. You know, he's he's making it a little bit of a celebration for uh, himself when he plays his old plays his old club. Yeah. As for tonight, Landon Knack returns for the Dodgers uh, to make a start. The Dodgers are kind of going back and forth. If it was going to be a Ryan Yarbrough bull game kind of bullpen situation, they end up recalling Landon Knack. He will start against Patrick Sandoval. Knack, of course, four starts at the major league level, did not allow two earned run, more than two earned runs in any of those four starts. Um, 2.61 ERA, a whip under one. For him on the other side, you've got Patrick Sandoval for the Angels. Uh, 5.24 ERA, 1.50 whip, and a 2-8 and eight record. Uh, so it feels like a matchup that's going to favor the Dodgers from a pitching perspective. You mentioned Mike Trout dealing with some knee injuries, the issues, so he will not be in the lineup. Obviously, anytime the Dodgers play, they're going to be heavy favorites, but you look up and down this matchup tonight, Anthony, you and I will be doing a post-game show afterwards, but from a pitching perspective, I, I feel like Knack is an advantage over Sandoval from an offensive perspective, even without Mookie Betts. Obviously a huge advantage for the Dodgers there. Um, so it, this feels like a game that coming off of three out of four in Colorado, especially day game yesterday. So they get to come home. They get a little extra rest there. Like things sh set up well here for the Dodgers tonight. Yeah. And, and you know, it's always nice to come out of a series at Coors Field thinking that, you know, you figured things out and that you're getting yeah. right. Um, yeah. so, you know, so maybe that carries over. You know, I know we've been waiting for that for a month and a half now to, yeah. to see some su sustained uh, offensive um, success. Maybe they'll have it now, um, you know, come off Coors Field and face a pitcher who you should probably um, see the ball well against. And then, you know, that's a positive thing. I like the knack matchup. I'm very curious to see what he does. We've seen him look really, really good this season. Yeah. Um, you know, so we'll see how he comes back and 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 takes them out at Dodger Stadium tonight. Um, you know, hoping for the best. You can never have enough starting pitching. And and if if you know worst case kinds of scenarios happen, uh, knock on wood, you know, Landon Knack is gonna be a guy that the Dodgers are gonna have to turn to. And so um, this isn't just like a spot start for him. This is this is him being part of the the plans. Yeah, absolutely. He went down uh, to Oklahoma City. He made five starts there since pitching last for the Dodgers on May nineteenth, and uh, one zero three two and one earned runs across those starts. Did have some walk issues, which is uncharacteristic. Nine walks in his last three games, but um, overall, Landon Knack seeming to to maintain some success there. I'll give you three bets. Them some things to track. We went two for two last time, so we're going to get a little aggressive with three even money or better bets tonight. Uh, on the offensive side, I usually don't love the the batter props, but Will Smith over one and a half total bases, even money. He's just been smoking the ball. I know that the his box score hasn't necessarily reflected that. Did get a home run, but uh, Will Smith to have a pair of singles or a double or better, that's plus 110. So give me Will Smith over one and a half total bases. And then a couple anti-Patrick Sandoval bets. 
uh, under 16 and a half outs. Um, I look at his game log and he has gone under this in his last two. Um, or excuse me, he went five and 5.2 in his last two. So he would need to go 5.1 or fewer. That's even yeah. money as well. And then over five and a half hits allowed. That is also even money. Eight hits in each of his last two outings against the Giants and the Astros. So not exactly two offensive powerhouses. So he has, is operating on an extra day of rest. But give me Sandoval under 16 and a half outs, un, over five and a half hits allowed. And then Will Smith over one and a half total bases. Any of those three in particular that jump out to you, Anthony? Um, I think the the 16 outs. Yeah. Is is it's interesting that it's even there. Yeah, I, I, that's I, would, I was surprised. I, I I thought it would be like fifteen. You know, right. fifteen and a half might be the number. It's kind of like, does he come back out for the six? But you get an yeah. extra out there in the six for the Dodgers to try and knock a guy out. Yeah, good chance too that if you win that bet, you're probably going to win the Will Smith bet also, right? Like they might yeah. coincide with each other. I like I like your picks on all three of those. I love it. I love it. Well, be with Anthony tonight and myself as we do a post game show. It's a seven ten game, so we got another one of our nine forty five ten p.m. games. I'm not sending Anthony any text messages to Jinx. <laughs> we have both we both get, been guilty of texting the other about one nothing games. We're we're hoping for a lot of offense tonight. So be with us right here on the Dodger Blue YouTube page. We'll be here post game for about an hour, breaking down everything, answering questions, all that sort of thing. So if you're new here. Subscribe, ring the notification bell if you're a podcast person, Apple, Spotify, and Google. That is Anthony Wittrado. You can find him on Twitter, at A Uh, Give him a follow. Follow his takes on, on the Dodgers, the Lakers, all sorts of stuff. So good stuff over on Anthony's page. And uh, we hope we'll see you tonight after the game. My name is Jeff. Enjoy the rest of your day. As always, go Dodgers.